This is WGAL 8, the Susquehanna Valley's news leader. Now, coverage you can count on continues. This is WGAL News 8 at 5. An EF2 tornado blows through a stretch of Lancaster County, destroying everything in its path, leaving a trail of debris. It's caused an estimated $8 million in damage, and the cleanup is just beginning. News 8 is set up along the tornado's path and in the Weather Center, bringing you every angle. Our coverage begins in the center of the damage, where News 8 Lancaster County reporter Caitlin Smith talked to a couple who got the WGAL storm alert just in time. Yeah, this is their home and it dates back to 1865. They say they just had it reshingled a few years ago and thought it was strong, but it was no match for that tornado that just tore it right off. Yeah, it's uh, pretty devastating. Gary and Dottie Taylor have lived in this home for 45 years and were at home Wednesday night. We turned on uh, Channel 8 and Joe Calhoun was standing there and the dot was right at White Horse and going towards Gap. And I told my husband, we need to get into the basement. Hey, we were rock and roll and it was shaking that. The home has a lot of water damage and the couple's belongings littered their yard. On the front porch, that is Timmy, my middle one. A treasured photo that can be saved. And the couple feels their lives were too. It's scary, but you're very thankful that you're all right. As you can see, neighbors are helping the couple rebuild. They've been here throughout the day, and we will tell you much more about that coming up tonight on News 8 at 6. In Lancaster County, Caitlin Smith, News 8. On the other end of the damage, about five miles away, more devastation. News 8's Barbara Barr is live along Cambridge Road at a historic cemetery dating back to the 1700s. Kim, this religious carving, one of the many things that were toppled over here at the Peckway Presbyterian Church and Cemetery. The pastor and church members were out here looking at damage today after a tornado that tested their faith. Thank God no one was hurt. This is not a life here, you know, but it means a lot to the people of the community. There is a lot of history here at the Peckway Presbyterian Cemetery. It dates back to 1724. This is ages here. Uh, this dates back to the Indian War days, Revolutionary War. Parishioner Elmer Armin has been picking up American flags scattered by the intense wind. You know who's in control and who has the power behind all this. Trees are uprooted and tombstones toppled but there's reason they feel blessed. There's a saying that sometimes the Lord allows the storm to rage, but he calms the child in the storm during those times. And that's really what I'm thinking about these people. And while there is a lot of damage here, the parishioners and the pastor say they are ready to rebuild and move on. And the wind here, not so gentle reminder of what blew through here. Barbara Barr, live in Lancaster County for News 8. The path of destruction goes right through Salisbury Township. Here's News 8 Chief Meteorologist Joe Calhoun, who was on the air the moment that tornado warning was issued. He's here with some new information about the strength of this storm. Yeah, it was an EF2 tornado. Let me uh, explain what that means. First of all, I want to go back to last evening and show you the storm. It's a classic a look to the, the storm. You can see the circulation here, the heaviest going right up through parts of Salisbury Township. Now, you kind of look at this storm, you kind of divide it into quadrants, and typically the thunder of the tornado will form in that southwest quadrant. That's exactly what happened, and it tracked to the northeast. The uh, National Weather Service has estimated it at an EF2 tornado with winds 100 and 125 miles an hour, path length of about 4.7 miles, maximum width at about 4 hundred yards. That storm continued uh, to push away, but look at all the damage around the Susquehanna Valley and not only here, but up and down the East Coast, all the way from Virginia down near Raleigh, Durham. They had a tornado emergency that was in effect. Our weather is settling down. I'll have the complete forecast coming up. Your county is dealing with high water cleanup. Residents who live along Conewago Creek are still dealing with the effects tonight. News 8's York reporter Ed Weinstock is live along the creek. Ken, we've been monitoring Conewago Creek in East Manchester since uh, about mid-morning, and it does show some signs of receding now, but it's still causing problems for people that live along Conewago Creek Road and other local roads. 
It may be days before Conewago Creek returns to normal. For now, sections of Conewago Creek Road are underwater. The backyards of some homes have been swallowed up. Tim Rice has seen it all before. And so many other people down lower, they're stuck until the creek goes down. Sections of Bowers Bridge Road in Conewago Township are also impassable. Parts of Creek Bottom Road in East Manchester are also submerged. Dowdy Leonard didn't want to drive his car through the water. He wasn't sure how deep it was. As you can see, my car is um, very low and it's, uh, it's easily, you can, it can easily get stuck. Well, just check with MedEd about the power situation here in York County and the latest word about 600 homes still in the dark. Most of them, about 400, are in Springsbury Township. In York County, at Weinstock News 8. You can find more Storm Team coverage right now on our app, including the raw footage of these incredible aerials showing you the damage. You can also get life-saving radar during the storms down to your street. On to Dauphin County, where a humane officer is investigating who shot and killed a dog on the side of the highway. News 8's Matt Barcaro is in Middletown with the latest. This is a fairly busy road, airport connector road between HIA and 283. A witness told us seeing the dog get shot was one of the saddest things he's ever had to watch. He tells us he was on the road around 5 o'clock last night and saw a car parked to the side and a dog run in front of it. He says he pulled over to help with the dog, but then saw a man throw the dog over the guardrail and shoot it twice. It appeared to be a small Doberman. The witness called 911 and a state police trooper came to investigate. But today, the state police told us the case has been referred to a humane officer out of Cumberland County. The witness was able to jot down a part of the license plate of the car as it drove away, and we're working to find out if that driver has been located. In Middletown, I'm Matt Barcaro, News 8. Tonight in Harrisburg, we're learning more about the investigation into the illegal immigrant who posed as a Harrisburg High School student for years. News 8's Harrisburg reporter Portia Johnson has new details. Yes, well, sources tell us that the parents of 23-year-old Arthur Samarin could be charged. Now, we are told that he was living with his parents here, uh, and court documents say the latest home address listed is Middletown. Now, police say Samarin used the fake name of Asher Potts. He was known by many um, as a 17-year-old stellar honor roll student at Harrisburg High School. Now, police say he is now in the Dauphin County prison after he he was not able to make bail of felony charges of identity theft and tampering with public records. Now, police say that he obtained a false Social Security card and a driver's license, to name a few. They also say that his visa had expired under the assumed identity of Potts. Now, in terms of what his motive could have been, a close friend tells me that he just he believes he just wanted to further his education and join the U.S. military. Reporting live in Harrisburg, Portia Johnson, News 8. Commitment 2016 tonight with the latest News 8 Franklin and Marshall College poll that's out. It has updated numbers on who Pennsylvanians are supporting in the presidential race. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton still holds a substantial lead over Bernie Sanders, 9 to 27 percent. And if the Republican primary were held today, Trump leads his opponents with 22 percent of the support. However, Ted Cruz has fallen from second to fourth place in the state behind Marco Rubio and John Kasich. The lead is slightly smaller than the February poll, but still a lead. It's closer with Marco Rubio, who is now in second place in the Franklin and Marshall College poll. Pennsylvania's primary is set for April 26th. Well, the GOP debate is about to get underway tonight in Houston, Texas. It's the final debate before Super Tuesday with Republican contests in 14 states. News 8 Washington reporter Sally Kidd joins us with a look at what's expected at tonight's debate. This is really a crucial night for the GOP contenders because it will be their final opportunity to debate before Super Tuesday. Now, the candidates did walkthroughs of the debate stage in Houston this afternoon. Texas is one of 12 states to make its presidential pick on Super Tuesday. Donald Trump heads into tonight with momentum from three primary wins in a row. He's predicting the rhetoric will heat up between him and rival Marco Rubio. 
Polls in the Lone Star State show Texas's own Ted Cruz is leading the pack, but with consecutive third place finishes at a recent staff shakeup, political observers say tonight will be especially important for Cruz as he tries to regain some lost ground. The criticism of Cruz playing politics dirty has stuck, and you can look at his favorability numbers, which have slipped since South Carolina. You can look at, at, at his numbers overall. Joining Trump, Rubio, and Cruz on stage tonight will be Ohio Governor John Kasich and retired neurosurgeon Ben Carson. Reporting from Washington, I'm Sally Kidd. Nearly 200 packets of synthetic marijuana seized at a busy Susquehanna Valley train station. How police caught him next on News 8 at 5. Feels quite different out there this evening. In fact, radar showing numerous rain and snow showers. They'll be with us through the evening hours. Temperatures already in the 30s. They'll continue to fall. Here's your eight day forecast. After about 8 o'clock, I think the showers are over with, but we drop down into the 20s. And storm team coverage continues in the next half hour, including what's left of this Amish schoolhouse that was wiped off its foundation. And now they're selling the merchandise just like a store. Your stolen credit card information sold on a part of the internet that's hard to access. I'm at Underside Consumer Reporter Brian Roach. Tonight at 6, I'll take you into the deep web. This is coverage you can count on. With Kim Lemon and Ron Martin, the WGAL News 8 Storm Team forecast with Chief Meteorologist Joe Calhoun and traffic with Danielle Woods. Now WGAL News 8 at 5 continues. A state Supreme Court justice just appeared before a judge for his involvement in the state's porn email scandal. Eight on your side, government reporter Pete Muntean has the update. Supreme Court Justice Michael Aiken is not getting punished for now. Aiken was silent going into a court of judicial discipline hearing in Pittsburgh. The former Cumberland County District Attorney is accused of being in on a network of raunchy emails sent on state accounts, a scandal known as Porngate. A plea deal was expected today. Now his hearing will continue a week from Monday. State Attorney General Kathleen Kane, who first exposed that network of raunchy emails, did not have comment today after a state capitol hearing. In Harrisburg, Pete Mundeen, News 8. Police say they have busted a New York to Lancaster drug operation. Police say they arrested Dante Gillespie at the Lancaster train station, and he had 199 packets of synthetic marijuana from New York City on his possession. Police have been tracking Gillespie for a while and made the bust earlier this month. Police say the pack itself for $20 a piece, so the drugs that he allegedly had on him would be worth around $4,000. Gillespie is being held without bail because of a previous warrant. Right now, a man's facing federal charges, accused of unwanted sexual contact with three co-workers. Police say 35-year-old Ricardo Reyes of Harrisburg worked at the Defense Logistics Agency Distribution Center in New Cumberland. Officials say the crimes happened in June of 2015. If convicted, he faces up to six years in prison. Now, a WGAL News 8 Storm Team forecast with Chief Meteorologist Joe Calhoun. Said Weinstock reported a little earlier, yeah, we do have some flooding problems in some areas. Minor flooding at that, though. Uh, the Conestoga has now started to crest and coming down. Still at uh, minor flood levels at both, uh, the both Middletown and at Hershey, but just at the action stage, starting to come down a little bit on the yellow breaches. Also, the kind of the wind, so the warnings have dropped there. Coming up at 530, I will have all the river stages. They're rising, but below flood stage. Right now, looking alive in Lebanon, some rain and snow showers around 36. Big difference from where the day started, up near 50. Southwest winds 11, but gusting to near 30 miles an hour. They've been out of the west, southwest. Not typically a cold air direction, but this is a pretty powerful storm bringing in all that cold air. So through the evening, I think up to about 8, maybe 9 o'clock in extreme northeastern counties, we could still see a few stray showers of rain or some wet snow. And it's going to be windy and chilly, though. And we'll you know, hold in the 30s and then drop down into the 20s to low 30s overnight tonight. Cloudy, brisk winds, maybe even a few passing flurries. Now, I think there's still a few clouds around tomorrow morning. But I think we see more sunshine by tomorrow afternoon, but still blustery and chilly. Winds will settle down by this time tomorrow, but most of the day being that 15, 20, 25 mile an hour range. And I don't think we're getting out of the 30s tomorrow. It's a bit on the colder side. Now looking live at the radar, you can see those rain and snow showers, pretty numerous 
a lot, a lot of rain and snow and more snow off to the north where it's only 26 in Bradford right now, 29 in Johnstown uh, here in the Susquehanna Valley. It's mostly light stuff. Every once in a while we pick up a moderate and kind of mix in there. Uh, but look at the temperatures. Everybody in the 30s except Chambersburg at 41 at last report. Now, this will start to wane as we go through the evening. Predictor shows the shower starting to fall apart. Still rather cloudy though through the evening and overnight tonight. Predictor showing some clearing. I still think there's some clouds as you, you start your day, especially north and west of Harrisburg. Then they'll start to dissipate. We'll see more sunshine. But look at the numbers. Mid to upper 30s tomorrow. And with a gusty wind, it's going to feel more like the, the teens and 20s most of the day tomorrow afternoon. 40 degrees on Saturday. A little better and Although a little breeze, it certainly won't be as windy as tomorrow. And milder day, it looks like a pretty good weekend. We get up to about 54 on Sunday. Monday's not looking all that bad. Uh, we have a chance of a shower in, but it's looking like this system coming in on Monday's very weak. I thought it would cool it down, but it doesn't look like it will until maybe another system comes through with a chance of some more showers on Wednesday. That is another cold front. It'll make it brisk and a little chillier toward the end of next week. Don't forget to like us on our News 8 Storm Team Facebook page and lots of stats about the tornadoes there also. And uh, checking out the roadways at this hour, a little, uh, little less busy on the weather front. How? tonight. How's it on the roadways, Danielle? Well, a little less busier as well from what we saw this morning for the commute, but definitely as you saw in the live reports, we still do have flooding affecting some spots throughout the Susquehanna Valley, so definitely use caution. If you suspect flooding, remember to turn around because there have been a lot of uh, high water rescues this morning and throughout the day, so you don't want that to happen. Now, there are some things to watch out for. You do have some residual delays along Route 30 eastbound following a crash there at the Helm exit, so those should be going away pretty soon, but in Lancaster County, you have a crash reported there. This one on Lincoln Highway East near Pitney Road in East Lampeter Township. And as we take a look in Lebanon County, an accident there as well. This one on Route 934 near Palmyra Belgrove Road in North Anvil Township. Now, if you're heading out towards the Beltway, the good news is we don't have any accidents reported there at this time or any disabled vehicles or anything like that. But we do have some congestion, as you can see here, as we take a look at 83 from the 13th Street camera. So both directions, both north and southbound, things are going pretty slowly. And then you see the speeds there showing that as well, about 12 miles per hour, 83 southbound. And if you're traveling on 81 northbound, heading towards the 81-83 split, things are moving pretty slowly there as well, about 16 miles per hour. So let's take a look at some of your drive times this evening, where you can see things are slow, 81-83 split to York split. That'll take you about 19 minutes, but smooth sailing after that. And also York split to 81-83 split, that'll take you about 24 minutes. So traffic, stop and go there as well. And if you're traveling between York and Lancaster counties this evening, yeah, you can see a little bit how that crash did affect the drive times there from York to Lancaster. That'll take you about 31 minutes. And from Lancaster to York, that'll take you about the same. This Lancaster Toyota traffic report is brought to you by the Fulton Theater's hilarious Divine Sister Act through March 26th. For more information, visit thefulton.org. A nurse at a Pennsylvania VA hospital now facing charges after police say he helped to perform a surgery while drunk. That story is next on News 8 at 5. But we head to a break looking live over a windy Harrisburg tonight. More local headlines at 5. In Lancaster County, a state police fire marshal says lightning during last night's storm sparked a fire that destroyed a home in Laycock Township. The fire marshal says the fire caused about $400,000 in damage to the home on Irish Town Road. No one was home at the time. A 10-year-old boy is recovering tonight after he was hit by a car this morning in Lancaster. It happened around 8 o'clock on the 400 block of Duke Street. He was taken to the hospital to be checked out, and he is expected to be okay. Police say the boy was with a parent at the time of the crash. So far, no charges have been filed. In your county, state police are looking for this man. They say robbed a pharmacy last night at Knife Point. State police say the man showed a knife to the clerk at the Lion Pharmacy in Red Lion and demanded prescription drugs. The suspect got away with the pills. In northeastern Pennsylvania, a nurse at the Wilkes-Barre VA hospital is facing charges tonight after police say he performed, helped to perform a surgery drunk. Nurse Richard Pierre got called into work February 4th. Court papers say Pierre told police that he had four or five beers at the Mohegan Sun Casino before he got paged to go to an emergency appendectomy. When he got to the operating room, he was responsible for preparing the patient, getting materials ready for surgery, and monitoring the patient's vitals during surgery. 
Patient safety is paramount. We want to make sure our patients are safe. Um, as soon as we were notified of the event, we made sure there were no unsafe situations for our patients, and then we did the further investigations. Pierre has been a registered nurse since 1979. His status with the VA is not clear tonight. A plane crash caught on camera why police are praising the pilot's quick thinking tonight. Imagine being on this Ferris wheel as strong winds rock the ride. We'll have those stories next on News 8 at 5. Welcome back to News 8 at 5. Now to some incredible stories caught on camera. A wildfire destroyed nearly 10 acres of steep, rugged terrain near Malibu, California. The fire started overnight in the woods, forcing 80 evacuations from a nearby camp. Firefighters say a member of an inmate camp crew who was helping to fight the flames was hit in the head by a falling rock and has major injuries. So far, no word on how the fire started. An unusual sight off the coast of New York this morning, a U.S. Coast Guard ship capsized while responding to a fishing boat that ran aground. Five members of the Coast Guard were on board the ship near Rockaway when it tipped over. Seven people were on the fishing boat. No one was hurt on either of the ships. A plane crash lands, crash lands on a road north of Los Angeles, hitting five cars. The single engine plane slammed into the ground and came to a stop. The pilot lost control of the plane, and police say he picked the best possible spot to land it as it crashed. No one was hurt, not even the pilot. The FAA is investigating. Intense winds rocked a Ferris wheel in Iowa. The gondolas were swayed by gusts as strong as 60 miles an hour. No passengers were on the ride at the time at the modern Woodman Park in Davenport. Several were damaged, but only one had to be removed. Next on News 8 at 5.30. A tight budget at the Pennsylvania Game Commission may force the shutdown of one of Lancaster County's biggest natural tourist destinations. In Washington, lawmakers are trying to balance your privacy and national security. This is the hardest question I've seen in government. A court order to Apple to help the FBI unlock an iPhone center stage during today's Senate hearings on worldwide terror threats. And a trail of destruction, millions of dollars of damage after an EF2 tornado tears through part of Lancaster County. Our live storm team coverage continues. News 8 at 530 starts now. This is WGAL 8, the Susquehanna Valley's news leader. 